you all right welcome back to fortitude so folks the guy over there is Britton Payne. I'm JW. We constitute fortitude. And we have a guy today in, in studio, Britton, that is an interesting cat. He's got a pretty cool backstory, but does a lot of things for the city of Fort Worth. Yeah, he does. Um, before we talk to Mr. David Cook, we're going to talk about CapTex real quick. Yeah. This All this, David, is because of people like CapTex and Mike Thomas, specifically over at CapTex. Sure. They're one of the, they're one of the only you one know of Mike. The, one yeah. of the two uh, local banks, truly local banks, with hundreds of years of local bank experience. So obviously they're helping us here, but we want to help them because we believe they are a superior product for those seeking banking needs. <laughs> yes. So Very thank good. you guys. At Damn, Tanks. that was good. Was that memory? It was on the spot. That was fantastic. The delivery anyway, was unbelievable. Enough about that. Let's talk about this guy. Yes. So. I have a question though. When we're getting into city, city stuff, we've visited this subject before the speed. This is not a speed limit discussion. This is more of a, everyone's breaking the speed limit. And I'm convinced, <laughs> I think they're drafting now. I think people are going so fast behind the tail. I have a, a large vehicle. I think maybe the price of gas is high enough. Have you noticed this? You drove here from downtown. They're drafting behind you. There, there's no cautious distance between the tailgater and now. I did not notice that. And I did come out the <laughs> Chisholm Trail Parkway. And what I did notice, it, it was obvious to me that there are more people on the road i think covid's over i agree so I there's agree. more people on the road they might be traveling a little faster <laughs> yep. and they might be drafting because of the cost yeah. of gasoline yeah so i, I get and all that the, the crotch rockets the motorcycles are in full speed i mean those guys are whizzing I have seen that a time or two. Yeah. And I, I'm just saying It kind that, of excites me. I right. like the, the wheelies. That's something bad just waiting to happen. Yes. The yes. voice we're hearing is the <laughs> is the guy in the name of David Cook. He's the city manager of our great city of Fort Worth, Texas. Welcome to the show, Mr. Yes, Cook. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Much. It's yeah, great to be here. Sure. Thank you uh, for having me. Before we talk about what you do for a living, um, our crack research team has, dis has discovered that you wrestled collegiately at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. That is outstanding. Please tell us how that happened. So my, there we go. I like that. We pulled that from one fanfare. of your matches. That crowd noise. <laughs> well, that crowd noise is probably not from a wrestling match because that would have been too many people in your crowd noise. Mm -hmm. It would uh, have been much more like this. Is that? Yeah, that's one? probably yeah. more like it. Okay. David, where did, you, where did you grow up? First off. So I've I've lived in a number of different places. Family grew, so I grew up in California, Illinois. Graduated from high school in North Carolina. So I made a loop around yep. the country, and uh, spent a lot of time there in North Carolina. But I've been here in Texas for the last almost eight years. It'll be eight years in June. Yeah. Were you wrestling scholarship at North Carolina? I I was. How, so I how, started in uh, junior high, which was in Illinois, yep. and then went to North Carolina, and finished up high school there. And then went to college at uh, University of North Carolina. What uh, class and how good a wrestler were you? So I'll give you a little bit. So I was a couple-time All-American. Uh, finished second in the country my junior year. This is so not this too bad. Is, not this too is bad. my show. This is about city and stuff. You got a sports show with Estridge, and now you're just that. bringing no, all that over this is here. background, sir. So, background. So I did want you to know, though, that um, I went to a 40-year reunion just a couple weeks ago in Chapel Hill <laughs> with for wrestlers. wrestling with oh, rest, with yes. former wrestlers. But the highlight of our weekend, I think, was on uh, – that would have been Saturday night when we beat Duke in the Final Four. Oh, wow. wow. And so the, we just happened to be in Chapel Hill when that happened. So and the town goes crazy. Any of the singlets come back out for the reunion? Pictures of old singlets <laughs> came out, but no real old singlets. How do you came know out. the name of it? Well, that's, I was impressed. What I know. It's I the impressed. required issued uniform. That's okay, right. that's it's right. the standard uh, fare. I was, okay, I'm impressed with that. Now any wrestling, any actually like couple beers, twelve two a.m. Like you want to take me, kind of thing. Go on just for old time's sake. <laughs> I think, uh, unfortunately, no. <laughs> so I don't want to sound boring or anything, but. Like city you, council meetings, yes, that, that would be yeah, kind right. of funny. You can tell it's been forty years. Yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. everyone was tame. It was, Everybody it was, was good. tame. Okay, good, good, good. Get, let's get into the city stuff now. For All sure, right. for sure. So, um, how do you get? How do you get into this? You, you come out of UNC, and then what was the first? Job? How does someone become a city manager? Uh, so my story was I got an undergraduate degree in economics and public policy. 
And uh, I didn't know what to do next. So I said, graduate school is obvious the next step. Yep. So I ended up getting a master's in public administration. Mm -hmm. And it was in that program that I met some people that did this city manager thing. Yeah. And I thought, well, that sounds pretty cool. I think I'll try that. Yeah. And the rest, I started in the city of Charlotte, uh, worked my way to the federal government for a very brief period of time, and then went back to local government. So local government excited me. That's where you get to see uh, the fruits of your labor, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Firsthand, whether it's potholes or sidewalks or new projects yeah so and it was county level too right you've done so that i've done as well. city and county mm-hmm. and now i'm back in on the city side a big difference between those i mean you like one more i don't think there? so um uh, you still work with an elected body you still work with a number of different elected officials and you still have to get things done yeah so. is it um you look at those elected officials as like a new board coming in almost if you were working on the private sector, or is it much more challenging because of the whole public election process and things like that and appeasing them? Yeah, I don't know if I can compare it much to the private sector. I haven't spent much time in the mm-hmm. private sector, but I've worked with elected bo- uh, bodies now going on, well, almost that 40-year period of time. Right. Um, and and when you think about it, they put themselves up before the voter to take on that job of leading a city or a county. Yeah. Right? So I have great respect for anybody that wants to put them, themselves up to vote, up for an election. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as you know, over this past year, we've had a new council or a council change where we have six new members and new mayor. Pretty soon we have an, ele- we have an election in a couple of weeks and there'll be another new council member. And then another year from now we'll have add two seats. Yeah. And so- yeah. There's change going on. Um, change is good. I mean, I don't see that change is bad, and it just requires people like me to have to adjust and yeah, and respond differently. Well, and we're going through an a, just an explosive amount of growth here. So maybe talk a little bit about how that's changed in maybe some of the other environments you've been in, and it's maybe a really good thing, but a super challenging thing as well. Oh, that's a great. I'll I'll, I'll describe it this way. So during a pandemic, we did more building permits than the year before the pandemic. Mm. And so in 21 um, has been our highest number of permits so far. And that came on the tail of a year in the pandemic, which was higher than the year before. So growth has not stopped in the city of Fort Worth. And I know we're going to talk about the bond program in a minute. And it's the growth that leads to the need for bond programs where we take those votes before the voters so we can invest in infrastructure. Let me give you another context. So we're adding about 20,000 people a year. Mm -hmm. So every five years, we're adding about 100,000. So every five or six years, 100,000 people. Just think about the infrastructure that's needed for 100,000 people. Mm -hmm. And we need to do that about every five or six years. How many pipes is that? How many uh, water and sewer pipes and uh, what size? I know you're asking your co-host <laughs> that question. Me, yeah. Well, let's let's <clears throat> let's back up for yeah. a second. For those that don't know, what does a city manager do? What is it? What is what do your duties include? Oh, that's a good that's a good yeah, question. That's so a good one. Um, I'll, I'll describe it in a couple of different ways. So I work for I think about it in a private sector model. So I work for a board of directors the mayor and the city council or the board of directors. Then they hire a CEO and I'm the CEO that's got to carry out the policy of the board of directors and the day-to-day operations of the business. What's pretty cool is the city's business is a number of unique different businesses, right? So we do police, fire, parks and recreation, libraries. We run a convention center. We have three municipal airports. We have a regional water and sewer utility, we have to manage all the sidewalks, roads, street lights, intersections, and we have to make sure that all that works on a day-to-day basis. A lot of the stuff that the city does, I hope people take for granted, right? It just works. How many total a, employees? Uh, about 7,000. Mm-hmm. So like one of the, the area's largest employers too, right? Sure, one of the largest employers. And so um, I hire and fire all the directors of all those different businesses and departments I just mentioned. But, you know, really it's try to make sure that the 
needs of all of our citizens and visitors get handled each and every day and that we're planning for the future. And that's part of that bond program right. that we put in the uh, infrastructure that's necessary for a growing city. So very th exciting. This is a lot of things. So generally speaking, what does your day look like? When are you getting up and how, how does that go? And then when are you done? Is it an everyday job? Are you Saturday, Sunday off? So I think that varies, right? Um, most of the nights this week, I've had a night meeting. Some of it's related to the bond and trying to communicate what the bond means to our citizens. Um, I actually don't have a meeting tonight. So what are you guys doing after? Yeah, that's what you're doing. Yeah. That's what we're doing here. Yeah. 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 And uh, but let's take tomorrow. There's a, a couple city items tomorrow. There's a groundbreaking on a park on the north side of the city. Mm hmm. And there's a bond meeting at the Hanley Meadowbrook uh, Recreation Center. Right. So, and then there might it. be a particular venue and team that I've seen you at a few times that we've maybe had some players from. Yeah. That so might actually, be attending. there's a lacrosse game tomorrow night at 7:30. I think we're up against the Georgia Swarm. I think three I got brothers. That right. I think is who they have. Right. Is, right. Yeah. All right. And all three are going to be playing. This should be a big game for our guys. Yeah. So here, are you here's going a to the lacrosse game. Oh sure, oh, right. We, we, we love on the glass. Game. This guy's yeah. on the yeah. Here's, he loves it. Here's a shout out to the Panther City Lacrosse team. So, yeah, thanks for being here in Fort Worth. It's exciting. Absolutely. I had the thing. I had the. Yeah. Wow, wow. I was going to try to do that. We put it in post. Yeah, you just did it without having. Yeah, it. yeah. You don't need that. You don't need that button. Yeah. No, it's a great. That is like the best. Like it shouldn't even be a kept secret. People should go out and see those games. It's a beautiful yeah. facility, and it's it's just exciting. It's a good for Fort Worth to have that. So uh, absolutely, you saw all the Dickey stuff go through. That's another part of the job too. Yes, is building you know huge venues that bring a lot of people and tax revenue here. So maybe talk about you know uh, that's almost kind of like an investment deal where the city alongside somebody or some things may invest and then hopefully recur the revenue back into the folds as well. Yeah, I'll do it in this way. The life of a city is over a long span of time, right? In the Dickies Arena, uh, that concept idea started a couple decades ago, mm -hmm. right? And so then it takes time and it takes money. And the state legislature was involved in the Dickies Arena financing. Uh, when I moved here almost eight years ago, the voters of Fort Worth had just approved the revenues for the Dickies Arena, right? And so then after you have the revenues, then you could design and build it. Yeah. So that's happened really in the last eight years. And if you remember where Dickies Arena and the parking deck currently sit, there were businesses there. So you had to relocate the business as well. So an idea like Dickies Arena it takes time to get it done. But I'll tell you what, Everybody's really excited about having Dickie's Arena now, yeah. right? And they're killing it, right? They're putting on the shows, they're putting on um, the concerts, and they're drew the lacrosse team. So I think they're meeting and exceeding people's expectations that we had a number no of years doubt. ago. Great for yeah. the city, yeah. no doubt. Best about thing it. you've no. seen or hope to see there. Best thing I've seen. Well, Led Zeppelin. Yeah, Led Zeppelin. I don't think they're making a comeback. So I think you, you that, never know. Matt, Matt's a friend of ours. Yeah. I mean, he may he could pull that off. All right. At least plant and pay. Well, they're not. Right? Yeah. They're where, did, where, where did you see him? I never saw him. Oh, okay. yeah. Never saw him. And I understand they did play at the convention center in the. That's right. Back at, in the what, day. Back in the day. Yeah. It was like, it was like 70s, 80s. -ish. Yeah. I saw you yeah. too in that convention center. Nice. Yeah. yeah. It's David, a good place. What's the what's the hardest part of your job? The hardest part of the job. Uh, you know, I think it's probably like other businesses too. It's when you have, uh, personnel issues you got to deal with that are challenging mm -hmm. every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. But the policy side, I really enjoy the relationship with the council members. I really enjoy. So th th that's not a challenge of the job. Anything that you were, you were really on board with that maybe you have regret now that didn't happen the way, or is there anything like that you could speak to that? something you you were adamant about that didn't get done or was done wrongly god if you gave me more time i'm i'm sure there are after 40 years of hey that didn't go the way i thought but uh nothing comes to mind right now um and i'll tell you where there's when we get into the bond program yeah 
uh, one of the things that I'll talk about is open space, right? And it's one of those things that, um, you know, we want people to come out and vote. And open space is one of those new propositions on there. Um, I'll do it now so you will get that yeah, out later. Sure. Uh, because I think as we grow, and we're going to continue to grow here in Fort Worth, right? I, that's going to happen. And we have the land to do it. And the Metroplex is just a exciting place to be so people are moving here jobs are moving here so i don't i think growth is in our future and it's not going to slow down anytime soon how long do you think i don't want to make a, a shot on that because i think we'll still go through business cycles sure where you'll see ups and downs but one of the propositions we have is about protecting open space uh, as we grow we're we take land from a natural environment and we build on it Right. And we're doing it now at the pace of about 46 acres a week. And so if we want to protect spaces, which I think we should, then we need to think about preserving some of the green spaces, open spaces, natural areas that are here before they get developed. Mm -hmm. So one of the propositions is, I think it's proposition E is to uh, approve 15 million for the city to continue to protect natural areas and ecosystems. And that's not for us today or tomorrow, although we can benefit from it, but it's really for the next generation too. Yeah. So we have to have a long-term perspective. Nice. Are there other places in the country that have done that, that sure. you're kind of modeling after? Sure. There are many the places. Uh, Colorado has uh, several counties yeah. and cities that do that. They're, I'm familiar with me several in North Carolina. That Is that the Greenbelt stuff like in Austin? Is that similar? It could be Greenbelts. Mm -hmm. It could be natural. We have a great natural preserve yeah. here in the city yeah. of Fort Worth. And, yeah. You know, I think it's one of those jewels that uh, I hope people take advantage of but it's one yep. of the largest uh, assemblages of land that have been protected and we mm -hmm. want to make sure that that continues in other areas of the city i'm so excited i get to ask this question i'm going to steal your thunder can you tell us about the 2022 bond election well we thank you for first, asking first me. one of those non nine percenters who gets out there and hits the polls on a rainy tuesday night let's answer that question i, I thought you'd be proud of me for i'm very proud of in. you that's good. So, yes, did you know there's a bond <laughs> proposition coming up? Did you know that, JW? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, uh, and I'll do this up front. Early voting starts next Monday, okay. April 25th. Yep. And the election day is Saturday, May 7th. Um, we are asking voters to vote on five things. And I already talked about the premise of needing this. We're growing. We need the infrastructure. So, the largest part of the bond program is roads and transportation mm -hmm. right and the total amount of all five is 560 million uh if you drive around the different parts of fort worth i think you've already recognized the need for some mobility improvements in parts of the city mm -hmm. and this is particularly an issue in the north part of fort worth and as part of putting the bond program together, we started this conversation over a year ago. And when you would go to public meetings in North Fort Worth, all you hear about is roads. Yeah. And so uh, you'll that's why you'll see that being one of the largest uh, numbers in the of the bond proposal overall. Just potholes, but, asphalt overlay, what kind of, I mean, we're breaking no, down. Like up there, JM. it's mostly widening roads, Okay, right? Taking two-lane roads and making them four-lane roads and adding all the stuff that goes with that, which includes sidewalks and street lights and those things. But there's a big number in the, in the proposition, too, for fixing neighborhood streets. Mm -hmm. Now we're back to potholes and, and going into the older parts of the neighborhoods where the road needs are a little bit, you think about the age of those roads, more repairs need to be need, um, are needed. Yep. And the other thing is, and it's part of this bond program that we looked at equity in a different way, right? So we looked at the needs of each area of the city, and some areas of the city have more needs, and they have different needs. So mm -hmm. the older parts of the city have more old road needs. If you go to North Fort Worth, they want you to widen the roads because – they don't have as many, perhaps, potholes, but they want those roads to be wider and be able to carry more vehicles. Yeah. 
Um, so we got roads on there. That's the biggest part of the bond. That's Proposition A. Proposition B is Parks and Recreation. And there's a number of neat projects that are in there in different parts of the city. Uh, some to highlight is because it got some news was Forest Park Pool is getting replaced. Wow. We're also going to add another aquatic center that will be part of the Stop 6, what's called the Stop 6 Hub. So that'll be a rec center, a community center, library, aquatic facility mm -hmm. uh, on that part of the city. And then we have improvements uh, in different areas, Heritage Park downtown, the Water Gardens, Gateway Park. I know I'll leave something out, but well, the yeah, Forest so. Park pool, real quick, David. Does yeah. that you said you're replacing it? Does that mean it's going to be? It'll stay there. The pool will remain. It'll just be fixed up, or is it going away? No, what else? you do is uh, the existing pool, in in its current form, will go away. But in the same space, a pool very similar to what is currently okay. there will be. It'll there was be some replaced pushback, I think, from the from the locals for the pool because a lot of like TCU uses it for their swim team at some point and. Uh, I thought there were there were some issues. I thought, but it sounds like it got solved. Sure, I think the issues got solved. Um, I think at the beginning of the bond program, when we went out with the first scope, uh, there was a concern of losing the lap lanes because you're right. There's not only TCU, but some other swim clubs use Forest Park, and they wanted to make sure that the same length swim lanes were replaced. Right. Okay. So, Sorry. And that, where is that thing over by Granberry Road where it splits there, where it goes up? It's right next to the, close to the zoo. And it really is in a beautiful piece of property. Yeah. When you're in Forest Park, you really can't um, it's kind see of like any a, houses or yeah. anything outside. It. Yeah. So, um, further propositions? You oh, just, sorry. Yeah. So A and B, C, I believe is public safety facilities. Mm -hmm. So that's replacing two fire stations, a new police station. Always need D, that. D is a library, and that's in the far north part of... Uh, uh, Fort Worth, and then E, as I mentioned, was open space for fifteen million. Yep. So there is federal funding attached to some of this. Does that work that way? This is why it's important. And talk a little bit about if it doesn't get done, there now is some kind of lag that exists. Kind of, I, mean, I don't know if you can. Good but, lead. Yeah. That's okay. a, thanks for the layup. I, I should have said something about. It. Well, can you so, use a wrestling term for that rather than a, lay, a basketball? Uh, um, a like slam dunk? A, yeah, just That's a not, neck hold. Like, here, choke take hold. my choke neck. Choke Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So where are we? Oh, no. yeah, leverage. Yes. Leverage <laughs> yes. is the word I was looking for. So thank you. Part of the bond program and looking at both roads and parks and recreation is to try to leverage other people's money. Mm -hmm. And so you'll remember the county went and did a bond program for transportation projects. Yeah. So we're going to leverage some of their money through this bond program, right? We're also mm -hmm. looking to leverage federal money, both through the infrastructure bill and any other money. So we, when we are out on the stump, we tell people that for the if you vote for the transportation bonds, we're going to leverage other people's money. And instead of getting perhaps $350 million in roads, we're going to get a half a billion dollars in roads because we mm -hmm. can leverage that money. On the parks and rec side, there's a couple projects in there that we're going to partner with other entities, whether it's the Botanic Garden or the zoo or Heritage Park. So we're going to leverage other people's money uh, for the park and rec bond as well. So thank you for that. The yeah, leverage it, is an important component. Well, and, and the bottom line is someone else is going to go get that if we don't, right? I mean, we can... We can say, no, we don't want that. And it's like, then we're just, we're giving it elsewhere. So That's like, true like on the, the transportation yeah, side. Yeah, like yes. the federal highway <laughs> funds where we give into this pool and then we don't go back and, and kind of demand our fair share with it. So it's kind of a way of doing that as well. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, thank you for the leverage because that is the point I needed to make. Uh, so our good friend, Chief Noakes, he's been on the show once, coming on twice here in the, ne in the next month, but... Does crime factor into your daily responsibilities with all that going on with, with Chief Noakes and all the police department? Do you have to deal with crime issues at all ever? Uh, oh, absolutely. In what um, capacity? Well, it, uh, I think the manager and the relationship with the police chief is tied up in a number of different ways, right? And just as an example, I'll get all the notifications of whether there's a shooting or a SWAT call out or and so um, the manager's office, I'm very aware when there are events occurring in the city. And I think Neil would tell you there are too many of those events happening in the city. Mm -hmm. And it's all of our jobs to try to figure out 
how to make sure that it's a safe community. And it's not just the police chief's responsibility. It's, it's my responsibility. And frankly, it's the responsibility of, of other departments in the city. Like we have a role in parks and recreation. We have a role in the code compliance department. Mm -hmm. So we all have a role in making sure the city's safe and in assisting the police department in a very difficult job. But, you know, and the role of the citizens. I I have friends who are cops, and sometimes I see some unsightly characters that just, you know, are up to no good roaming around the neighborhood, and I ask them about it, and the cop will say, just call the cops, man. That's what we're there for. Like, you got the, the number that's the non-emergency. Just call them, and, th- and they'll help out. I mean, I think so much is of that is, like, this reluctance or this expectation that, well, why why isn't somebody patrolling this? Like, let them know that that's going on. And I think that can happen, you know, with a lot of things. Sure. I think a big Absolutely. part of your job is is hearing and understanding the public input. The worst thing that you can do as a citizen is sit there and just not go and, and get involved publicly and let people know you want the Forest Park pullback or whatever. Is just sit there and think, let them make the decision, and I'll just complain about it after it's it's done, right? Right. Good point. I mean, actually, uh, it it goes broader than just police. We do want citizens to be engaged in their communities. Sometimes it's going to be a police issue. It's also call in the pothole, call in the street light that's out. Mm -hmm. This might be a silly question, David, but is the the boom in construction, housing, apartments, commercial – is that this is all good? We know, but is that are we are we overdoing it, or is it, is this is this the part of the plan? Well, I don't God's know God's plan. Or yeah, plan? I was going to say <laughs> city manager's plan. I don't know. Um, God. So I describe. I'll describe it. Um, I'll describe it this way. Uh, I read in the newspaper a couple weeks ago that everybody's going to get sticker shock when they get their property tax bill this year, and that's because the assess values of the properties in the city of Fort Worth generally are going up, whether it's the land in the building or both. Now that's part of the equation of why tax revenues go up is the assessed value. The other is the property tax rate and the city of Fort Worth has reduced the property tax rate over the last number of years in recognition that the values are increasing at a pretty steep rate. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's the combination of values are increasing, property tax rates are going down. Some people, though, are paying more in property tax revenue, and nobody wants to pay more in property tax revenue. I think it's safe to say that. I I would put this out there, though. It is our objective and goal that we do things that make this city attractive. And if this city is attractive and people move here and want to be here, then land values and houses are going up because we are attracting people to come here. I don't think we want the opposite. I don't think we want a place where people want to move from away from right? Those are places where values go down, right? So if we do the things that attract people, that attract jobs, the uh, aside, whatever of that is values are going up. Our responsibility then is to look at how much do we need to reduce the property tax rate and still meet the needs of a growing city and sure. all the needs that our citizens have. You may yeah. have just answered the next question with that. That was really nice. But uh, how do you how do you define success for our city? And is it is it simply just people moving here? And is that, yeah. is that, that simple? I don't know if it's uh, there's a simple what I what I think about is are we increasing the prosperity of people who are here and want to come here? So if the prosperity, and then we can debate, how do you want to define prosperity? Is it income levels? Is it wealth levels? But I do think it's our job to provide the services, provide the infrastructure where everybody can prosper here in the city of Fort Worth. Good answer. On that attraction piece, maybe touch on the economic development, just kind of what's going on, because it is part of the, the bigger picture. The bond stuff makes you know, all of the facilities, amenities, a very attractive part of it. 
but what's the city doing as far as attracting the corporate, you know, job creators to to keep people here once they move. So if they lose their job, they're not just on to the next place. Oh, sure. And so part we've, I think, you know, we've had an updated the economic development plan the last number of years. And, you know, my takeaways, we still have to focus on a number of areas, right? The, the, everybody likes to talk about catching the big fish, but most job growth comes from existing businesses and small, small businesses. So mm-hmm. we still have to, have a lot of attention that we need to pay to existing businesses who are here, entrepreneurs that want to succeed here. And then, yes, we need a to have a role in how do we attract businesses come here from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And so we work with all the chambers of commerce. Um, we work with the state of Texas, and we try to be attractive for businesses that want to leave other states like California or New York or Illinois or wherever they want to come from. Yeah, yeah. If you didn't work this job, what job would you work? If I didn't work this job, you could be you could I, be a masked wrestler if you wanted to. Nah, it could be anything. That's not it. Maybe an Uber uh, Uber driver or a bartender. I don't know. Maybe, that, maybe you could do both, and that, then they'd throw up in the back of the Uber or yeah. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. you wouldn't be an Uber driver. That you think yeah. so? Well, I you know I do like getting around and like the, meeting seeing, people. seeing what's going on around the city and <laughs> yeah. Do you have yeah. what do you do when you're not managing managing the city? What are your you mean hobbies? Uh, uh, I have a hobby. I like to play golf, okay. run every now and then. Um, I have a great fiance who some of you know. Yeah, and um, sports. You love going and to sports. all kind of sports yeah. events, right? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. So we ask all of our guests, by the way, thanks for the time today. We ask all of our guests, uh, family aside, kids and all that, your fiance, congratulations, by thank the you, way. Thank you, thank you. What would you consider the best day of your whole life? The best day? I like that question. And, I've, I've, you know, I've answered the birth of my kids. That always comes up. Um, best day. How about that? At birth of kids comes up. Well, if you can't do kids, no familial familiar matters. We keep you're yeah. not the only one. We had yeah, the guy I'm last time. To... We said no family, and they all go to the family. Victor yeah, Vandegrift, no. he hold stood on, like on. on like died on his sword for the family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it could be anything like um, it, just for you. This one's yeah. just for you. You don't yeah. you know? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Everybody that. knows that. Like that's that's a given, right? Yeah. You know, I thought it was pretty cool. I found out I got the job here in Fort Worth. There you so go. I was um, at Del Fresco's and in Fort Worth. Yeah, is that when, when you found out? Yeah, and I um, and that's when I introduced myself to uh, Deep Elm IPA. <laughs> so where, a, who were you a, in there? Can you say who you were in there with? Did I was they, did they on, my own. I was oh, on my and own. And they just called. Well, the, call? the uh, recruiter came in and told me, and so I was sitting at the bar and. Uh, that's my began my began my relationship with Deep LMIPA. That is beautiful. That's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, David, thank Cook, you City so Manager. much. Thank you for Appreciate joining us. It. Thank you, Captex Bank, yeah. for making us uh, making us live. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank welcome. You. Thank you for having me. Go vote, City. Yeah. It's your city. May seventh.